I'm uh, Jared Grant. I'm the operations manager at Artec Solutions and been here two years and glad to be with Ben on this afternoon webinar. Yeah, well, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays and Hanukkah for uh, those of you that that's uh, your 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 uh, forte, if you will. So for us, um, you know, Ben White with RCN Technologies, we partner directly with Jared and his team over at Artec uh, to help deliver pots of replacement solutions is a myriad of other things that we do, everything from data to, you know, um, fill over as a service and different things like that. So we're going to specifically be dealing about, you know, what was, what, what are things in the market currently? What did we see after the sunset of POTS? And then also uh, what is POTS, right? Let's, let's get into the nitty gritty, build up a foundation of what is all this stuff? What are all these terms? What's happening in the market? <clears throat> and where do we see things going in 2023 and 2024? Because uh, if they're anything like what uh, from August 2nd to now has been, uh, it's been a whirlwind. So anything to add, Jared, before we kick off? No, I think uh, maybe a starting point, a jumping off point, um, POTS, to make sure everybody's on the same page, just stands for plain old telephone system. Yeah. The good old copper wiring that we've all used uh, for phone systems for decades upon decades. The same phone that used to stretch out the cord all the way to the bathroom to hide what you were talking about from your siblings or parents or you name it that's the that's what we're talking about that same cord runs a whole lot of things and some of those are actually mission critical and life safety in design and that's what we're here for right the the things that you can't just make cellular or the things that you can't just go over fiber um talking about infrastructure why would we change over to something like the rcm pot solution so on and so forth so before we kick it off uh, and go to the next slide i just want to real quick the link for this meeting uh, you can absolutely share that link in the chat currently with any of your colleagues or anybody that might want to watch along um, and then also this is going to get recorded so at a future date unless they have questions today and they want to join they're always going to be able to go back and see this later so we'll kick off and, and go to the next slide here so oh i guess we should have done this one first <laughs> who the heck are these guys right so uh you know th this is us um you know i'm again regional account manager for the west jared's the operational manager for our tech our teams work together every single day to help deploy these solutions across the united states and and beyond in a couple of circumstances so as we move forward let's just go through the next slide the agenda for today right what are the challenges we see with pots what are some use cases and success stories and then what specifically about our solution is worth your time in understanding more about us and how we deploy right so we're going to kick off the poll real quick buddy noah over on the other side of life is going to help kick that off if you guys wouldn't mind jumping in there give us an idea are you currently using traditional pots lines just so you know if you don't know what that is right we talked about the telephone line elevators fire alarms fax machines uh scada anything that runs your hvac gates door alarms panic buttons all of those things are pots lines now you might not personally have that in your own home today uh, but if you've gone into a government building and or you have a building that's inspected by the local fire marshal there's a solid chance whether you've got a fire alarm a burglar alarm or any of those you probably do have pots lines all right we still have people going through answering some stuff all right so it looks like of the 18 people we have on here we still have a couple so if you can go in and just answer that for us we want to make sure we get a realistic polling result we only have 38 percent of you if santa only went to 38 percent of the houses there'd be some sad kids christmas morning all right all right so we're about 50 percent. that's better than the last election so we're going to move forward and go into what are POTS lines, right? So Jared mentioned it earlier, a POTS line, a plain old telephone service. This is the line that simply put runs over copper, mm -hmm. uh, goes from your local provider, right? Could be anybody in the country, uh, your typical ISP provider, uh, right? You know, Big Blue, Verizon, you have uh, folks like CenturyLink, you have uh, mom and pop shops locally in individual rural areas that provide internet services. Um, you know, they Suddenlink, for instance, they provide services like this. Um, however, you have a myriad of different woven wires and uh, some of them go over the telephone pole. Some of them go in the ground. 
Uh, but those copper lines run everything from elevator call boxes to fire alarms to those fax machines we were talking about to older credit card machines. You would be very surprised um, how many times when you go and put your credit card in at the gas pump outside or you put it in uh, when you go in to get you know a, a snack or something at the local 7-Eleven, chances are that's being ran over copper, whether you know it or not. So that's where we kind of jump off and we start talking about it really is in so many more places than what a lot of folks are used to, right? We see folks that don't even know they have POTS until their provider reaches out to them and goes, we're canceling these lines mm -hmm. or we're increasing the price of these lines because they no longer want to supplement them or, you know, they're not being subsidized by uh, the federal government to help replace them in, you know, everything from weather events to freezing ice to hurricanes, you name it. We see POTS lines get hurt pretty bad. Um, Jared, anything to add there before we move forward? No, that was pretty all-inclusive. Um, I think maybe to add real quickly onto what you said, some of these lines are important. Um, your elevator lines, your fire alarm lines, uh, these are lines that you can't afford to have down. Yeah. Mission um, critical life safety lines, like yeah. blue light poles and parking garages, whether it's commercial or on universities, right? Um, you know, we have a lot of emergency call boxes that are ran on these. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, a lot of buildings, whether it's commercial or public sector, typically your fire alarm for that building is being ran by a POTS line of some sort. Absolutely. If it hasn't already been converted to a digital solution. So yeah, moving on. What was the pot sunset? Why are we talking today? So basically the pot sunset was the FCC has been for years been trying to move away, if you will, um, from POTS lines provided and subsidized by the federal government to ISP providers. It's extremely expensive. They're usually the first things to go down. They're the last things to come back up after a weather event, right? Uh, we have some folks down in the South from the big freeze a couple years ago where, you know, the ISP we work with heavily to help them replace their customers. We ended up, uh, you know, the, the way he commented is they lost more money in that two weeks of freezing than they made the previous three years combined. Wow. So the actual provider, loses money. Well, why would anybody want to go into a business with a with a losing proposition, right? So between that side of it and the FCC saying, you know what, companies like Cradle Point and these, uh, you know, modem producers in the in the world, they've created something in line with the carriers that provides a better service than what traditional copper can provide, mm -hmm. both from a can I see it? Is it on? Is it off? If I do have an event, how fast can it come back up? Cellular is usually the last thing to go down and the first thing to come back up during an event. So a polar opposite of what we see from that telephone wire out on the you know pole itself or uh, buried in the conduit alongside fiber connections. What, what do you think, Jared? Any, any you know from the FCC side, what, what are your thoughts? Uh, very interesting. They gave about a five-year window, and turns out uh, there was a lot of talk about whether they were going to move that back because of COVID and all the changes to businesses that would happen. And they decided to keep that date firm, Yeah, uh, that there was a five-year window, not all COVID-related. So they kept that date very firm. And uh, that date came past here this past August. Yeah. Um, so No, and, and part of that date, it was pushed back multiple times. They were trying to get through. But here's, you know, with the fact that there are better solutions out there than copper was providing due to the fact that because mm -hmm. every time these lines go down they are mission critical they are life safety you're talking about during an event or during an outage it could be tens of hundreds of, you know thousands of lines that are out across a metro or across a uh, a certain area and that takes all of those elevator lines all of those fire alarms all the burglary alarms the panic buttons those will all now come offline mm -hmm. and and those are life safety and mission critical lines. You know, I need to be able to pick up that dispatch phone uh, and know that that or that panic button registers with the local area if I have an emergency. Mm -hmm. Can't do that if my system's out. So for us, when the FCC made that mandate and, and really threw the dart at the wall and said this year was going to be the year, we already started seeing some providers tell their customers, hey, when this comes out, we most likely will not service your area. You're too far out. It costs too much money to support you. And or vice versa, we saw an increase in pricing, right? Uh, before it was artificially kept low through subsidies and other things, it behooved them to keep the price below a certain point so that it was reasonable for the customer. Once we saw the POTS 
sunset hit, we saw incredible changes in the cost plan. And we're talking single lines going for, you know, going from $40 a month and 80, you know, between 40 and 80, all the way up to 140, 200. I have one out in Oklahoma that was a city pool for, you know, they pick up the phone, they can call emergency services if somebody gets hurt. And that line went to $1,200 a month, $1,200 a month to any business or any municipality. That's a hell of a hit when you do 12, you know, times 12 <clears throat> for the whole year. So that's enough of that piece. In the handout section, uh, you will notice there is an FCC order. Don't take our word for it. The feds have got their fancy legalese language all built into that. Take a look at that. It, it, it kind of goes through and describes in the handout section. You can download that. That's something you can share with yourself, your team, uh, you know, you name it. But that is where a lot of the information we just talked about comes from. But more importantly, that was that leverage piece that the federal government deployed that said, listen, from here on out, there's no reason or uh, no mandate, if you will, to have to stay or, or contribute to a customer who is buying POTS line. So I guess what I'm saying there is you as a customer, you're paying for the service. Your ISP or your phone provider does not have to provide these services. Now, you might have a contractual agreement that says, you know, X number of uh, months or years from here. But at some point, that contract falls away. And at some point, you will have to make a decision on how you move forward. And that's what we wanted to talk to you about today. What is the solution that we have available? So a couple of things that make up the, you know, the reason why we would go to our solution, right? The cost point. We talked about some of this when we were talking about, you know, what did we see in the market? Where has it gone, right? 65 to to $100 a month, uh, you know, for one copper line, right? If you are a facility that has a fire alarm, a burglary alarm, your fax machine, an elevator, Right. You could be paying four hundred dollars a month for basically a phone call line. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you when you put that into you know frame of reference with say like a cell phone line or something like that, it's drastically different, especially for the limited amount of data that actually flows over that. Right. The average cost savings when working with our tech and, and and either procuring through our tech and one of their partners or through RCN, right? is 20 to 50%. We've seen upwards, like the one with the city pool, you know, their whole system, the ROI was recognized in the first month. They paid for the entire system for that one line the very first month. Mm. Uh, if you factor install costs by month two, systems paid for itself, yeah. 36 months of coverage, if you will, or, or, or a, a contract, if you will, completely paid for their system and, and got rid of the other redundant line that they had that honestly was only up and running probably 50% of the time. Uh, anything to add there, Jared? That's amazing that it would go to $1,200 for one phone line. Right. And it was a PR play, right? They didn't want to be the mean provider, if you will, that uh, told the city, we will not be covering your life safety line for the, the, the city pool. So instead of canceling it, they just basically cooked it to where the, it, the city had no option but Dang. to move away. It was unaffordable at that right. point. So kind of forced them. And it, and it happened in a week's bit period. It went from normal cost per month to crazy cost per month with a Dear John, Dear Jane letter in a single month period. So for us, you know, we got a call and we were able to with, work with you guys and go straight to work on deploying the solution, Strange. helping them get rid of that uh, unneeded bill every month. Wow. I'm going to go back to the chat real quick, just make sure because I was looking at the handout section. Does anybody have any questions or, or comments, concerns currently? We want to make sure you know, as interactive as possible, we, we're helping get your guys' input. Hit, hit up the chat if you do have any questions. Jared and I will keep eyes and tabs on it and help as we go. You know, visibility, right? Typical visibility with an average uh, POTS line is none. You, you, you don't know it's on or off. Typically, there's no proactive management of the system, right? Uh, checking the lines can take hours or sometimes days, depending on your provider of choice. It, it, it ends up becoming... We've had customers that did not know their system was out until they came in on Monday and found out somebody was stuck in the elevator. We've had panic buttons and blue light poles that nobody knew they weren't working until they got a complaint and it ended up in the news that somebody got hurt and tried to use the system and it didn't work. And so that's where not only is it a cost thing, we're actually talking about something that's not redundant, not protected, no visibility. Uh, it really makes it to where moving to a more technologically sound solution like what Artex produced with the Potslink solution 
becomes the right thing to do for yourself and anybody you're engaging with, whatever the solution may be. Yeah. What, what, any thoughts on visibility? You know, I imagining that you don't find out the fire alarm works until you need to call that when a fire is happening is not the right time to find out that that line is down. Or your panic button, or your, or panic your button, burglary alarm, or you name it, right? Or when somebody's stuck in an elevator, uh, that is not the time to find out it's down. So having the visibility to see and be proactive yeah, um, is everything. A lot of the companies we work with, um, some of them are retirement homes. Um, they need that. Yeah, the panic bedside button. panic button. Yep. Yeah, they need that immediately. So yeah. <clears throat> um, it's... It, more i would say almost more than the cost yeah the safety and the reassurance of the pots kit solution can be very important in that case so yeah absolutely um, the average company in america has between three and four pots lines uh fire alarms can be dual redundant meaning sometimes your fire alarm will actually have two mm -hmm. uh, depending on your location or regional uh mandate um but then also you know you typically most people have a burglary system or a fax line or an elevator um, if it's a, you know, ADA compliant facility and it's a two-story facility, guaranteed there is some sort of, of, of copper line and or system mm -hmm. handling that life safety line, right? A couple of things that, you know, that allow us to leverage a solution that allows us is the fact that we have the support to back it up, right? So we talked about what's kind of the issue with the older solution, if you will, the way we've been doing business for a couple decades or multiple decades, if you will. But when we start looking at, okay, I get it. You guys are able to service this. You're able to provide something. You give us visibility, single pane of glass. You no, know, is it on? Is it off? Uh, having proactive management from the RTEC support team. If something goes off, we're approaching you. You're not reaching out to us saying, hey, is my line working? Mm -hmm. We're reaching out to you saying, hey, we have an issue on deck and we want to deal with that with you. Part of that is our knock service. How does your team handle that when that comes in? Uh, as far as the uh, knock services yeah. calls, yeah, the knock service support call. Like, so I, I'm a customer. I'm in the you know middle of Nebraska. All of a sudden, you know, I, I didn't know that the snowstorm knocked out my, my 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 system. What would you guys do? What's the process? How does that customer engage with us? Well, uh, contacting our uh, support services, uh, they're going to look for what has got that offline, um, whether it be Cradle Point. Uh, device is not connecting or any of the uh, wiring. Yeah. So making sure that everything is connected and going through a system of tests to find out where is the disconnect. Yeah. And we're doing that on your behalf, right? So that's the one thing that we, we like. This is as turnkey of a solution as possible. It's an all-inclusive solution that enables our team to proactively monitor on your behalf. And that <coughs> leveraging that cradle point device, right? Here, here's where Here's where some magic <clears throat> happens. We have the ability to send an SMS, dashboard alert, email alert. Your team is told when something has happened automatically, leveraging the power that is in CM with Cradle Point and providing a solution that even if our team's not at the helm right then, you're getting that proactive. We have a problem. We may need to inspect it. There may be nothing wrong. It might just been a glitch or a power outage or something like that. But you're being told before it becomes a major issue, not after somebody needs that, whatever line it is in that moment. Yeah. So let's talk about some use cases and sex stories. So use case, we talked about elevators, right? Um, so a lot of elevators, you know, elevators are kind of like a, like a bathroom remodel. Most people don't put new elevators in, but once every couple of decades, right? It really has to get bad before you see people put new elevators in. They're very expensive. Um, they're, they're usually buried in a facility and they're, the, the elevator shaft, if you will, is usually the, the buildings built around it. Right. So you can't just go in and slap on a new one. Mm -hmm. So we do see a lot of older aging elevator infrastructures, even if it is a newer elevator or an updated unit, they still have the same reporting communication path, that copper line going out and hitting the D mark. Right. So our solution replaces that physical line, provides you that voice L over LTE connection. And then in the event that that elevator line is needed, it performs or behaves, if you will, very similar to your cell phone call. You know, I, I like to always say when I'm talking to folks, like 
if, if something, if an emergency happened that would, is going to lead to you not making it home tonight, would you trust the, the, you know, the phone booth on the corner or would you trust your cell phone to make that call? And for us, you know, my thought process is I'm not trusting the phone booth on the corner for all the same reasons. I don't want to trust the POTS line. You know, is it on? Is it off? When's the last time somebody even used this thing? Whereas we know cellular works and cellular works really darn well. And so for us, that's some of the benefits, right? For elevators, that POTS link can provide that increased reliability and reduced, you know, overall cost, if you will. So not only is it a cost endeavor, it's also a, it's going to work when you need it to work. And I think at this point, everybody, you know, I think everybody could pretty much say, yeah, you know what? Cellular is a proven solution. And Absolutely. our Potslink solution, you know, we've been deploying it for over, you know, over half a decade at this point, you know, nearly a full decade. If if you factor in the first brainchild that went out with with, with the leadership here at RCN and Artec. But at the end of the day, we've been deploying this for years with huge success mm -hmm. in some of the most complex environments in the country, let alone globally, right? Airports and hospitals and school districts and you name it. Um, so yeah, anything to add there on the use case of the elevator? I think you uh, covered it pretty good. Uh, yeah, a lot of these situations, uh, I, we spoke to it already, but we're not just replacing a phone. Like, oh, yeah. I can't make a phone call now, shucks. Yeah. Uh, this is, I'm in the elevator and it's not moving and I pick up that phone inside the elevator because nobody can hear me and dead, what am I going to do? Right. If, you know, your example of if you were in trouble and, well, I've got that payphone sitting on the corner and trouble's heading my way and I got my cell phone, the payphone, which one do I have high confidence in? Yep. Yeah. I mean, these, a lot of these situations are need to, yeah. not just, well, we're, oh no, I can't make a phone call now. I can't call right and order something over the phone. It's, uh, yeah, could be in situations, case of life or death. Uh, yeah. So agree. One of those is with blue light poles, right? Blue light poles were specifically designed, right? Uh, and you can download this one. Uh, this is a blue light pole for emergency systems, right? Uh, I guess you'd say case study, if you will. Uh, so feel free to download that. I think it'd be valuable for anybody uh, who's interested in, okay, what um, what is it that we'd be looking at? So with that being said, the blue light pole itself, um, at the end of the day, right, it, it comes all shapes and sizes. We have solar ones. We have some that are are done in line with uh, the system that they are, you know, deploying, um, right? It could be a powered unit out in a parking lot. It could be a smaller wall hanging unit on the outside of a, a local library. It could be one that's in your parking garage for a commercial uh, mall or something like that, or at, at a stadium. You see them at stadiums, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the U.S. Department of Justice, as you see here, um, Every private school with more than 15,000 students, 92% of all universities, these are, you know, you wouldn't think about it, but these are all over most metros and most, uh, you know, education centers or large campuses. You know, I actually would have guessed higher than 92% as far as uh, campuses and university. I thought I'd been closer to 99, 100%. Is it, you know, there's always though, those online colleges, right? <laughs> maybe that's it. Uh, smaller colleges uh, here in Knoxville, we have a few smaller community colleges. With just a few buildings on their campus they have the blue lights there though. right even though bigger than they are uh, some of them are about the size of an average high school yeah but yes they have those blue lights there for those emergency cases so. right I, i've been to a couple <clears throat> shopping malls a couple airports mm -hmm. uh larger work campuses out in the bay area in california have been to and they're around there because they're such large campuses if you have a security alert they mm -hmm. hit that button uh one of the things that we've seen from a from a cost savings like Besides the copper line, those blue light poles have to be inspected every six months was the average one from the last customer we worked with. Okay. Every six months, somebody had to go and physically touch and make a call, right? Oh, and, okay. and, and this campus specifically had over 250 of these that mm -hmm. they were operating across three separate campus sites. And so one of the things that we were talking to them about was the sheer gas, time, and, and labor that was it baked into that. We allowed them to completely get rid of that process, except for when we notified them of an issue. So proactive management allowed mm. them to decrease their cost of ownership wow. that they were baking into their budget every year, their fuel budget, their labor budget, everything. This was all baked into, oh, well, we just have to do it whether we like it or not. Mm. But every six months, a lot can happen in six months. What happens if that line stopped working month one after its initial checkup? 
you got five months of well hopefully nobody needs it and that's where our system cost of ownership total reliability redundancy that's where it really came into its own for us statistically in a six month period what are the odds if you're checking it this afternoon it just went down this morning yeah (laughs) right (laughs) it just has only been down i'm not a betting man but i would not take that bet absolutely Uh, it might have been out for months and you didn't know and you wouldn't have known until you checked it six months later or until a true emergency happened. And again, that's not when you want to find out the lines are down in an right. emergency situation. So here's another uh, <clears throat> POTS link, if you will. Download this if you want. Uh, but this basically covers some of the benefits and, and things that we experience in deploying, um, you know, deploying in an airport environment, right? Going forward and you know, really, honestly, one of the most secure environments that we deal with, but that anybody would deal with, and also some of the most, you know, we can't have things going wrong in airports, right? Just for the, the general, everybody kind of understands that. So no reason to go into detail, but right. at the end of the day, a panic button, a door jar button, uh, a, a fire alarm, those things need to be able to work. Absolutely. For us, our tech and RCN has deployed in these environments with great success and been able to provide entire, you know, terminal blocks with what they need to be successful. So, you know, one of the case studies uh, that you'll find in that POTS link flyer, you know, it, it talks about some of the success we've had with a specific customer and other places, but some of the challenges we've seen, right? Uh, they're very busy. Um, there's typically not a centralized person. They're hard to get to, right? There's, mm-hmm. uh, these are fairly large facilities. So getting one IT person or one person that knows the telecom layout it, it's difficult, right? There's thousands of lines that go into this. Having a solution that can handle all of that communication, all of that visibility, but still provide that customer, even a large scale, everything we've talked about so far, that's where the real power or, or proof in the pudding, if you will, comes from. Yeah. Right? I uh, kind of add on what you're saying. Uh, one of our customers is one of the major airports in the South. And when our tech guys out to do kind of a um, first time site survey, um what they found was that nobody there at that airport really knew what was down there oh all our (laughs) phone lines are in the basement and there's the door and here's the key have fun (laughs) and when asking well what's all set up nobody knew so nobody on site could answer what all systems they had down there and what was working what wasn't yeah we've actually seen customers where we've gone in and said hey these five lines they don't go anywhere and they've found out that their provider has been charging them for years um, for for a line that wasn't even in use. No, but nobody had any idea what it was right. supposed to go to. So they just kept paying their bill every month. How much did they pay for that with nothing they're paying for? No, paying for I nothing. mean, if we do the average, right, uh, let's just call it $100 a line. You know, I had one customer uh, with a school district. They had a line that was uh, three years old. Um, it was at a facility that had been demolished three mm. years previous. So there was no way this line was in use, but yet they paid a hundred dollars a line for three years. Um, you know, that was just one. We found 14 of those across the district. Right. So, you know, that's another piece to that. hundred dollars times 14 is $1,400 a month. Yeah. Over three years. It's a chunk of change that yeah. you're paying for nothing. So our next poll that we wanted to go through, if you guys can all just take a second and answer this for us, what is your primary concern about your current pot setup, right? Is it price? Is it lack of visibility? Is it reduced support from the provider? Or if you want, and it's something completely different, feel free to to answer that in the chat. And if there's any questions besides what's on the poll right now, feel free to feel free to ha- put those in the chat while we're waiting for the poll to fill out. Okay, so right now price seems to be the leading leading piece that most people have concern of. A lot of my customers, it's price and visibility. Those two things, right? So many people are used to being able to see what's on the network for everything else that they do, but telecom seems to still be in the stone age in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Okay, if, just finishing off the poll here, if anybody wants to answer. All right. Okay, moving on. What's our solution? We've talked a little bit about it. We've hinted at it. But is the POTS link solution? 
Uh, so it right reduces expense. It's a proof of fire alarm uh, solutions, right? It increases your total uptime, leveraging some of the you know the best hardware in the industry. Mm -hmm. It's got an onboard battery. It's got a one of the uh, best ATA systems on the market. It's got one of the best uh, digital you know you know digital gateways, if you will, or, mm -hmm. or routers, if you will, on the market, helping power it. You get that visibility, right? You you get all the support that we're looking for, and then you can future-proof everything. But the one thing I really like about our solution that really allows me to partner with you and sell more of this, and, and you know, as a salesperson, is the fact that we don't have to go in. We were talking about replacing the elevator earlier. We don't need to replace all that. We can use your existing infrastructure, right? Your existing DMARC board, all the things you have in place today. We go in with our solution and we're able to make it work with what you already have today. There's no huge cost of ownership or over the term, like the entire life of the product. There's not anything you really have to add. Now, if you want to replace your fire alarm, go ahead and do that. If you want to replace your fax lines, go ahead and do that. But our solution will work with what you have on deck today to make sure that the service and the quality of that service keeps going, mm -hmm. you know, for however long you decide to do business with us. There's a basic install, but there's no, we got to rip out everything here in the basement and start right. all over. And this may take seven to 10 days to get. We're done. not sure how much it's going to cost. Right. Yeah, right. We, that's Absolutely. all dialed in. You know what this is going to cost the day mm -hmm. it goes live for you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, from that point forward, it's, if you decide to change something, then great. But for the most part, there's nothing to change. I think the installation time from walk in the door to walk out for our installers is roughly between 60, maybe 90 minutes on the high side. Yeah. Uh, so there's not a lot for them to do and slow you down or cause the business to be at a standstill while they're ripping out the floors and taking out all your copper wiring yeah. that's ever been inside your building. Not at all. It's a very easy, compatible solution to what you already have. Absolutely. So like we mentioned earlier, we're powered by Cradle Point. Uh, this is a form factor that's fully enclosed. We don't have a bunch of pieces laying around. It, it's, it's, it's high and tight, right? It looks clean. It, it, it allows us to install almost anywhere. We keep our stuff out of your way. We plug your existing infrastructure into our system. We can fit up to eight RJ11 lines into a single kit. Mm -hmm. um, if you need additional kits, there's no additional cost. It's all priced out as a per line cost. Mm -hmm. which comes included with the hardware so you know in all honesty if you if ev everything but the additional antenna depending on your environment mm -hmm. uh, comes in the box right comes ready to deploy go live day one if we need to add an antenna we'll base that off the site survey and we'll base that off information we get from you but for the most part this thing comes ready to play yep right there are a couple free resources we kind of wanted to lead you to Right, get rtech.com, the webinar. Obviously, you can go there. If you would like a POTS evaluation from either Jared's team or somebody on the RCN side, if you're looking for more, you know, fully comprehensive install slash uh, sales, you know, overview, or maybe there you want to add fell over to the system as well. Those are all things we do. Uh, you can download today's slide package right from that same spot. Anything to add there on resources they can get from the RTech site? You know, I, what I would add is that um, our motto here is the right solution every time. So please reach out uh, to just, if nothing else, simply look at what you have and see what we can help with. You may have a situation where our solution might not work with what you have. And we don't want to just be here as sales orders takers. We want to help uh, assist with your needs as much as possible. So please reach out. Um, email, reach out to our website and talk to us, see what we can uh, advise or offer. Yeah. Anytime. Uh, honestly, a picture. If you've got a picture of your DMARC board and you know what lines we're supposed to be playing with and you can either circle them or tag them or whatever, mm -hmm. we, we can get right to work on letting you know, here's what it's going to cost. Here's our concerns. Here's some things that we need to ask. Um, it's not a high pressure deal. It's a, what do you have? Here's what we have to help solve it. And if we don't have something, chances are there's something that can replace it that we can help point you in the right direction. Absolutely. So I just wanted to make sure if we had any questions or Q&A, uh, we'll go through <laughs> that right now. We really appreciate everybody that's stayed this long, right? Uh, and and, and kind of heard us out on what the solution is, but we'd like to hear from you. What questions do you have? And you know what, what, what things can we cover that maybe we didn't cover already? Absolutely.
and while we're waiting for any questions to come in that you might have, um, you know, just going back to the antenna piece and how we how we plug in. So the you know it's battery backup. It's got a 110 volt uh, wall adapter. Plugs into your normal power solution. Mm -hmm. The so that's all very plain Jane normal run of the mill. But the antenna, just so you know, whether we got to do an internal building antenna or just a high gain same room, or we're just punching out and getting outside of the D mark room, or if we have to do a roof mount or something like that, we have an option available for you. Uh, however, which way you need to go. And one of the things that we do with that is we'll actually perform a site survey. Uh -huh. Our team will come on site. We'll tone out your lines. We'll we'll tag them. We'll look at the LTE environment that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. We'll work with your carrier of choice, figure out what is the best path forward so that when we deliver the solution, it's ready to go. It's ready. There's no oops or false starts. It's day one. You're up and running. We can cut the lines on the old guys and head on over to yeah. our tech. All right, so just going through the next step on here. If you could just answer the poll for us, how do we do today? Was this worth it? Was this uh, you know valuable for for your time? Is there something that we didn't cover? Feel free to put that in the in the link. We'd really like to understand better, not just if this webinar was worth your time, but we we want to always increase these to be as valuable for our customers as possible and our partners. We have several folks. Uh, from across our partnership ecosystem, right? Uh, you know, just going down the list, we've got uh, folks from Kajit, we've got folks from Cradle Point, we have uh, other folks from RCN who are here to learn more, right? What I would say is we are an ecosystem of partners. Mm -hmm. We work with almost everybody, uh, the carriers, Kajit, Cradle Point. There's not a way which if you needed this supported, if you needed this deployed, we're here for you. And Absolutely. Like Jared mentioned earlier, reach out. Uh, even if it's just to ensure, am I making the wrong decision? Am I making the right decision? Mm -hmm. If you don't need us, we will be the first ones to say, hey, yeah. what you have doesn't fit our flavor. Let's get you to something that will work. Absolutely. You know, maybe it's a cradle point solution, and all we have to do is transition you over to a, a you know more of a land based technology. Get away from copper and, and calls altogether. Or maybe you need a VoIP system, right? Mm -hmm. Which we can also help with. Absolutely. All right. So there's a lot that we can do beyond what we had here today. Hit us up if that's something you're looking for. But thank you so much for your time. Um, it doesn't look like we have any questions. I'm going to just double check real quick. Nope, we don't have any questions. So in the meantime, reach out if you need us. Have a blessed holiday season. A Merry Christmas to everybody. And uh, you all have a great one. Thanks, everyone.